So today's story You've heard this story, I mean, famous Rabbi Minkowitz tells us he was there as a bacher, and he tells the story in great detail, and you probably even heard it from him. But something happened unprecedented before or since at the Fabrengen of Shavuos, 1964. Before I go further, there are similar stories like this that happened over our history, a similar story with the Arizal, and, uh, and other great tzaddikim. And the story is this. At the Fabrengen of Shavuos 1964, the Rebbe was speaking then about Russian Jewry, the hidden behind the, the Iron Curtain, with great uh, pain. And he finished talking. So the Rebbe said Lachaim on a full cup. And then he looked at everyone. They went, no, no. And everybody like, didn't understand what. And then the Rebbe fell silent and made with his head an ex uh, uh, expression of very deep dissatisfaction. And then he said, when he's, talk when he's talking about his brother or his relative, he wouldn't wait. He, he means here, like in the general sense, he's talking to the Chassidim at the Fabrengen. He wouldn't be waiting till I told him to say Lachai. And he would step forward. And people did that, you know, the, by the Fabrengen, the, he, you can see it and hear it. People between the Sikhs who still had relatives trapped behind the Iron Curtain would come off and say Lachai and ask for a bracha. And in Yechidis, so he's saying for his brother, his relative, he doesn't wait till that I ask him to say Lachai. And he was talking about, he says, millions of Jews, and it, that's, no, one's, no one's moved, nobody's touched. The Rebbe was silent. People started saying Lachai, Lachai, but it was too late. And he turned to one of the senior Siddim, he says to him, Kiddush you want to make on a full cup of mashke. And now we're talking about the Rus Hashayidin, and you say Lachaim on a little small cup, it's not even full. So they started to sing a Shia Samech. I mean, everybody was like in a shock. What's, uh, they realized there was an opportunity here that. So they started singing, they remind me of learning that Shia Samech. They stopped them. This never happened, stop singing, very rarely. And then he threw his napkin. This never, nothing close to this. Threw his napkin on the table. If I'm not mistaken, uh, if I'm not mistaken, but Minkwood says the, the curry spilled, I'm not sure. And he began himself to sing with great bitterness the song, S and S, Shlof and Shlof It comes to eating, eating goes and sleeping, sleeping goes. But uh, to daven and learn, that doesn't go. That doesn't, that doesn't happen naturally and easily. He seemed to be like, so it's a song Chassidim would sing with bitterness and our spiritual insensitivity, what the song is saying. So the people started to join him with the Rebbe and he didn't want, maybe they said, not, don't sing with me. Tomorrow, and then he said, tomorrow they're going to ask me about getting exit, exit papers for a brother or a relative. So they'll know tomorrow where to come and to write in. And now there was a moment of Eis Ratzin. And through saying L'chaim with truth, and a good word, while it's still Yomtev, this is the end of Yomtev. With this, he says, Russian jury could have gone. In one moment, this is not, nobody is moved by this. Again, this is one of these moments, it's, you know, to blame the people. Again, this is not the first, this has happened, there is all a similar story, and there was a moment when the heavens opened and they've expected us to, and then he said like this, the fact that there is a, that there is a half a million Jews that are in, like choking, two million, two and a half million. This is not, this does, no one is moved, no one's touched. They think that there were help with their gold and silver. I'm not sure what he means by this. It's Rachmanus on you and Rachmanus on me, he said. 
And you would say, Rachmanus, you have no one to, to, to hear. You have no one, you have no one to whom to, to hear, for whom to listen. And 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 me to Rachmanus, what I have to sit on this take place on this chair. Send somebody else, like talking to the Abishter, then then send, like Moshe said, Shlachno Biatishlach. Let whoever it is, and he'll tell you when to say Lachayim. And him you'll listen to. And then he says here that there's something missing. He said other things. You can imagine how, how the feeling was of the of the crowd. And then the finally the Rebbe said, Is there a child here under Bar Mitzvah? He said, no, the child stood up on a bench. The Rebbe said, For, you, for the children, we have no tainas. And he said, No, he said to the child, Sing a Shia Samacha. The child started to sing, and the whole the whole crowd sang with him together. And the Rebbe held, uh, participated in the song in the, with the great Dvekus, and uh, with this, they said it was Mu'uyim, and the Rebbe's face was, uh, the word is awesome, but, but the true meaning of the word awesome. Again, commentary, I'm not going to make any commentary here. Again, this is not like this didn't happen, but uh, I guess the message is, I guess the message for us is, among other things, that in life, Sometimes out of nowhere, and no one expected this. They didn't. They told me, Rabbi Minkowitz says we didn't even realize that he finished the sicha. The whole thing was like so happened. We didn't realize that this is a, this is an opportunity to say lachayim, and the, the doors would have opened. It's 1964. So what's the message? The message is we, that we have to be always alert. You never know, my friends. You never know when a moment is coming where you can literally bring salvation for yourself, family, and, and in this case it was an, for, for Russian jury. You never know. In Halacha there's a similar concept. Matsoi Shabbat, if you know this, Saturday night, the minig is to draw fresh water. Now you have water in your, before Shabbos, you put water in your hot, your hot, uh, 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 the hot water dispenser, or as many of us have in our homes, we have a hot water dispenser. Anyway, we didn't use it on Shabbos, but it's there, you know, which you forgot. So Matzai Shabbos, we had to empty it. What's the reason? The Gemara says, because every Matzai Shabbos, the well of Miriam, the well of Miriam, which accompanied the Jews in the desert that was miraculous and brought healing and blessing, it came in Miriam's schus. So, Every, a whole week, it's in Tveria. It's somewhere in in the in the in, in Tveria in the in the, the the sea there. But Matzoi Shabbos, it travels through all of the subterranean waters of the world. It travels through all of the channels which we're learning in the Maimer about. So therefore, you draw the water, because the idea is literally you never know that moment. The water is traveling right in this locale, and you're drawing on it. Gemara tells us it's a medrash of a story of uh, this happened and so on. Now, what it means physically, I don't know, but it's the idea that you just turn your tap on then as soon as you can. It might be at this moment that Miriam's blessed waters are flowing through the pipes in your home, in your locale. So again, what the message is, the message is that, you know, the things in life that we do, we have to work on and prepare and it's a, and it's a whole build up and a plan and so on. And it has to be that aspect. I mean, it's even spiritually, but then there are great heights we can reach. And great blessings we can draw down and happens like this. And then we can lose the moment. So the message is always to be awake and aware and seize every opportunity. You all know, of course, the famous uh, Purim 1956, Tavshin Tesvav, 1955, which some people did seize the opportunity. You know, they thought it was a joke. Uh, Ronnie heard the tape, we have played it to the, to, uh, to the Chavra. Well, the Rebbe says, uh, basically, he said, it's just mind-blowing. It's on tape, never mind published. You can hear it. He basically said that you didn't suffer enough already. And, and, and we passed with flying colors in the test of poverty, whether we'll still keep our faith in Hashem despite persecution and poverty. And now it's time for the test of wealth. And it's a much more difficult test. It requires toil of the soul and toil of the body. He was saying it smiling. They thought he was like, it was a joke. He said, America, everything goes with a vote. So all those that are ready to take upon themselves the test of great wealth, 
should raise their right hand, a vote. You hear the crowd on the tape laughing. It was a Purim thing. You know, raise your right hands. If you want to be rich, who wants to be fantastically wealthy, raise your right hand. Three, four people did, and they did. That was very upset, just like here. He waited, he waited. And then he said, and tomorrow he's going to write in, then he eats a bracha for Panos, and this is lacking him, and that is that he's lacking. And now we were, he doesn't what's he used. We're able to seize one of the keys. The Gemara says there are three keys Hashem didn't give to anybody. No to no prophets, he kept it for himself. The key of life, the key of the revival of dead, and the, the key of rain, the key of the life, revival of, of the dead, and the key of of the Panosat uh, Chesamesim and and rain. Livelihood, revival of the dead, and 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 rain. And here, heaven granted us this key for a moment. So what should I do? What should I do? He's playing. He means that the people, you know, the, the big Chabad Chassid, no, he's not asking for bracha for, 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 for wealth. It, it's uh, it's past him. It's, in, it's, it's inappropriate. You ask for Gashmi, you ask for physical things. What should I do? That was in a moment. At least some people raised their hand. Okay, so again, to keep this positive and not chasushal negative, it's, you never know. So always be alert. Always be there to seize the opportunity. Always be there for that good word, for the amin, for that mitzvah. You never know. To this little thing, this is the key to opening up. You need muzzle. You need muzzle, and that's the muzzle. Okay, my friends.